Brooke with Super Tutor TV. Today I'm going to tell you about three lies your English teacher told you, probably in elementary school. Before we get started, I recommend that you subscribe to our channel. All you have to do is click the subscribe button below this video. It's really awesome and really fun. And go to our website, supertutortv.com slash subscribe and sign up for our mailing list. That's where we share with you the latest and greatest of products that we have here at Super Tutor TV. We'll also share any coupons or discounts as well as any giveaways and new videos that we have here on YouTube. So go check that out. So what are those three lies? Let's get to lie number one. Lie number one is never begin a sentence with because, but, or and. The reason that your teachers told you not to start a sentence with because is that a lot of times in third grade, kids start a clause with because and then they put a period after the clause. For example, a lot of third graders will write sentences that say things like, because it's really fun, period. And they'll call that a sentence. And it's not a sentence because that's actually a dependent clause, right? Because starts a dependent clause. In order for because to start something that's a complete sentence, you have to finish that sentence with a second clause that's an independent clause. So for example, you could say a sentence such as, because I was tired, comma, I took a nap. That is perfectly fine. Because in that sentence, before the comma, you say, because I was tired, and that's a dependent clause. And that attaches to the independent clause in the second half of the sentence, so it's totally kosher and it's totally fine, okay? But we don't want to have dependent clauses and then a period. That was the mistake that students were making in elementary school, but teachers made the mistake of telling you that you just can't start any sentences with because, which actually isn't true. You totally can. They just have to be grammatically correct and have two clauses, okay? The other one is but and and. In terms of starting a sentence with but or and, again, the reason that teachers tell you not to do this is that they get all these papers from like third graders that are, I went to the store and I bought a lollipop and it tasted really good. And then we went home, right? And they sound like they're just this endless stream of and, 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 and it makes them sound like a crazy elementary school kid. Yes. But and can totally be used in the middle of a sentence and same with but. I will say and and but at the beginning of a sentence are incredibly common. In fact, if you go to the New York Times, I'm at the New York Times.com right now. I'm going to just click on a fun article and we're going to play this game of find a sentence that begins with and or but in the New York Times. Facebook games to tackle fake news. Okay, I am going to take the challenge. Oh, look, I already found it. That took about five seconds. So you guys see how I can literally go to NewYorkTimes.com. I can select a totally random article. This was not staged. I did not check this before doing this. This is totally random. And I can find and at the beginning of a sentence. Here we have some politicians in the region have already called for hefty fines against social media networks when they fail to police false reports and hate speech online. And several European publishers have balked at participating in Facebook's fact-checking efforts. So you can see how we use it to add emphasis. It's totally, perfectly fine and normal. It adds a little bit of cadence and emphasis and journalistic action. But is also a really useful word to use at the beginning of a sentence. And trust me, in the NewYorkTimes.com, you will find it all over the place. Journalists love to start sentences with but. And my favorite place to find but is the opinion pages. So if I just go to the opinion page, I'm sure I can find something with a but in it. Because whenever we're trying to give our opinion, but is a way to steer people toward what your point of view is. So you can talk about other people's point of view, and then you say but, and then you point out something that you really want people to focus on or people to take note of. It's a really useful tool. I swear to God, everybody's using it. Everybody's doing it, people. And here's a but that didn't take long at all either. I just clicked on a quick opinion page article. But there's another more immediate level of risk involved in the bill's passage, colon. Dun, dun, dun. So, and a but, totally kosher. Next, lie your teacher told you. Was never end a sentence with a preposition. You can end a sentence with a preposition, and actually sometimes you have to end a sentence with a preposition in order to make it grammatically correct. So for example, if I asked you, what is your paper about? About is a preposition. My paper is about this. So here's the rule with the preposition. It's not that you can't end the sentence with the preposition. It's that you need to have an object somewhere. Well, here the object is what. My paper is about what? Right? Do you see how the what is what it's about? So as long as you have an object of the preposition somewhere in the sentence, it's totally cool if it ends in a preposition. So don't get so hung up on not having a preposition at the end of a sentence. Cool? Cool. Just make sure you know what the object of that preposition is, and it could be somewhere else in the sentence. And that's perfectly fine. 
And then finally, my third total lie your English teacher told you, and this one actually is something that comes up on the SAT and ACT a lot, so if you're taking those tests, pay attention. And that is always put a colon in front of a list. While it is true that we can use a colon in front of a list, you don't always put a colon in front of a list because there are other rules at play with the colon that have to be met. Namely, that what comes before the colon should generally be a complete independent clause. And sometimes in front of a list, we don't have a complete independent clause. The other thing about putting a colon in front of a list, we don't put a colon in front of a list if we're using other grammatical tools to introduce the list. For example, if I use the word for example in front of my list, I don't need a colon. If I use the words such as in front of my list, I don't need a colon. If I use the word including in front of my list, I don't need a colon. And if I put a colon, it's awkward because I'm not going to say I brought many things on my trip, including period. Do you see what I'm saying? And that's the first rule of colons, as I like to say. The first rule of colons is generally before the colon, we should be able to swap that colon out for a period. We should be able to have a full stop there or have a complete clause there, and it should grammatically make sense. So for example, I packed many items, including a toothbrush, a hat, and a bandana. So you see this, this no colon, okay? But if I get rid of the word including, then yes, I can use a colon. But the mistake is the belief that anytime you have the list, you need a colon. And that is not true. You do not always use a colon in front of a list. You can use a colon in front of a list, but you don't always need a colon in front of a list, especially if you have something else setting up the list. And in terms of colons, you can only use a colon if we have a complete sentence before the colon itself. And finally, there are other uses to colons as well. And I think some people don't know that because I think colons are only used in front of lists and they're always used in front of lists. And that's the mistake. So hopefully I've cleared that up for you. I hope you guys like this video. If so please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. And if you're prepping for the ACT, definitely go to our website and check out supertutortv.com. We have awesome ACT prep resources for you, including online prep, which you should check out. And some of it is totally free. So go head over there and I will see all of you next time at supertutortv.com. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.